And now we're going to get into Alberto before William, and I just see Sam popped in as well. So Alberto says, Mike, I'm fairly new to the world of options. I would like to understand how to use power options to create a portfolio of stocks to use for covered call, sell puts, and married puts. Thanks. Okay. All right. So this is something we may need to talk about on a coaching session, Alberto, or later. I don't know your portfolio size. I don't need to. We don't need to get into that right now. I'm starting fresh. You're starting fresh. You're new to options. You're comfortable with covered calls and you're comfortable with married puts. Honestly, if you want to split your portfolio, you want to open three married puts right now and three covered calls. First thing I would suggest is don't do that. Okay, Don't start all in at once. Here's what I would do. Let's say you're going to split your portfolio in half, 50% to covered calls, 50% to uh, married puts. All right, maybe you're not exactly 50-50. You're going to leave some cash aside for adjustments or just allocating what you're comfortable with. But half of what you're allocating to options is going to be split evenly between married puts and covered calls. Go to married put and you go to search. The default search that comes up, radioactive sorting by ES, EPSG, earnings per share growth. This is the same criteria shown below that's discussed in the blueprint. These are the trades that Ernie and I, 95 to 98% of the trades that Ernie and I post in the Fusion portfolio, the Open Trade Trade Tracker for our Fusion subscribers. He's in many positions. I didn't realize he was in that many, but Microsoft, Abbott, Qualcomm, Silver Wheaton, or Wheaton Precious Metals now, Marvel, Hologic, Alexian. Me on, this is a repair I've been in for, I'm going to get this repair and I'm going to be very happy with a 3.3% return. At one point it was down 18%. Um, so I'm happy with that. Um, but Kraft, AEM, and JD all came from this search at one point or another. They're not in there now because the market keeps changing. But you've got a mix of good stocks in here. You've got $40 stocks, $60 stocks, $70 stocks. Um, there's other ones that might be in there too. Uh, so you can adjust the fundamentals based on the stock price that you want. But I'm comfortable with these risks. Because this is the list I choose from from most of my ones. Sure, I want to do my research and analysis. I'm going to look at the stock chart, the company information, the news profile. I'm going to look at other information to make sure this is the one that I want. If I don't want Chegg for whatever reason, I'm just going to move down to the next one. Do my research and analysis on that as well, Alberto. Now, you're new. You want to create a portfolio to of stocks to use for covered calls. Um, sell puts and married puts. Okay. So if I'm starting from scratch, Alberto, I've got, let's just say $50,000. I'm putting 25K into married puts and 25K into covered calls or naked puts. I didn't see that. You said covered sell puts and married puts. Um, uh, maybe you just meant naked puts, not covered calls. But in any case, we'll get to that too, Alberto. So what I'm going to do right now is next week on Monday, I'm going to look through this list, do some quick research and analysis using those more information buttons, Find a position I want. Where was the one I was eyeing? I wasn't darling. There's was one I was looking at the other day. I was oh, TSM is the one that came up in the last webinar. That wasn't it. Uh, although it's doing well, don't get me wrong. But in any case, uh, let's just take, let's just say I decided on SSCC. So after I do my research and analysis, not a recommendation or suggestion to trade this position, but hey, you're trading it as a married put with only 7.6% risk, not too much can go wrong against you. But in any case, this, if this is the one I liked, Alberto, I'd go ahead and enter it next week into my broker, place the trade, then I'd add it to my portfolio. And then I'd stop. I would only do one. Let's say I had enough capital to do three or four married puts and three or four cash secured puts. Next week, I'm going to do one. I'm going to do one married put. Then I'm going to go into the naked put search. And you could choose to use um, the weekly picks of the day that Ernie back does if you want to do weekly sell puts or the monthly picks of the day if you wanted to do that. Or you could go into the search. If you wanted to look for something that's a little bit, yeah, see, some of the same stocks are here. Chag, JD.com, there's one uh, that I'm in that we're talking about. Um, what was the other one? It was, I thought it was here, uh, Amat and Sale uh, in this case. But anyway, why am I seeing some of the same stocks here? Because they're both neutral to bullish strategies. Married puts a little bit more bullish, but this is neutral to bullish strategy. We're looking for very similar criteria, except now instead of buying the stock in the put for longer term gain, 
selling maybe 20, 25, 30 days out put to get a good yield. Okay. So you might want to go ahead and make some adjustments here to what you want. Do you want a shorter time frame? If I wanted to do weeklies, I could look at all weeklies or select all expirations and zero to 10 days out in time. What yield do you want? What type of technicals do you want to use? Do you want to look for stocks that have a higher market cap, more stable stocks, Alberto? Is that what you want to look for? Use our defaults as a stepping stone. Narrow down your results. Get one here. Do your research and analysis, stock chart, company information, news, and then enter one naked put. Why am I being so conservative and so boring? Because then next Monday or two weeks out, as you're seeing how these two trades are progressing, you open the next one. Because maybe the market has changed. Maybe your sentiment and strength of the market has changed. So maybe you don't want to open a married put now. There's nothing wrong. And I don't think there's any bad time to open a married put. I get that question a lot. Is now a time to open a married put? To me, technically, there's no bad time to open a married put at all. <laughs> Do it when you want. You know you've got a controlled risk. Okay. Um, another thing you might want to consider here, Alberto, for the married put, always use the main search and our default radioactive screen. Open maybe just one at a time, wait a week or so, then open the next one. This is Ernie's advice as well. This is what he always tells me uh, when and I see him reply to an email if he answers it before I do. If you're looking for something more safe, blue chip stocks to do naked puts on, go to the sample search menu under naked puts. You've got broker and advisor recommended. All stocks in the S&P five star list over a 500 million market cap and above their 50-day moving average. Safety first is the large cap stocks, the blue chip stocks with naked puts with still looking for a reasonable return of 1.5%, maybe 30 to 45 days out. What makes you the most comfortable for the underlying? The underlying is just as important in the, in the naked put screen, and in my opinion, the covered call screen, as finding the premium that you want, the return and the downside protection you want as well. Ally Financial, some decent names in here. Ally Financial, um, a well, fifth third out of Tennessee. Uh, Nashville Predators fan. My parents live in Tennessee. Of course, I'm in Delaware, but I see the fifth third bank court commercials all the time because I saw the fly to the hockey package there. Newmont Mining is a good one. Uh, Capital One's in there. Skyworks had a great success with that uh, a couple years back as a married put position, but this is also be good as a naked put. So start with those, but just do a couple trades at a time. Don't try to load up your portfolio all at once. Do one trade here. Let it go for a while, track it, manage it with the portfolio, then enter the new trade. But that's how you're going to do it. You can analyze the sample searches on Naked Puts, Alberto, to see what makes you feel comfortable, the criteria that make you feel comfortable. On the Married Put screen, I got to tell you, I mean, 90, 95 to 98% of the trades that Ernie and I trade and post in the Married Put strategy that we post for our Fusion subscribers comes right from that default radioactive sorted by earnings per share growth list. Okay. All right. And so uh, if you, um, I apologize, if you um, need more help, Alberto, that's what the coaching sessions are for. Remember, you can go to your, your uh, on the main home tab there, you can click on free coaching. You'll see the available times that are open for next week with either myself or Ernie. We'll spend 35, 45 minutes with you walking over that criteria to help you out. But again, if you're starting from scratch and opening a new portfolio, I'd recommend opening one married put maybe next week maybe one safety naked put position next week, and then wait. Don't try to force all your positions in at once. Wait, track them, watch how they're performing with the market. Watch how, because you had mentioned you're, you're new to options and you're looking to do this, but track those two positions with real money in them. Watch how they perform. And then a week or two later, open up the next one. Open up a new married put. If your market sentiment's still the same, if you're hesitant now, manage your existing positions. Don't worry about the new, if something changes, we know a lot of things can change. We're still kind of in the EAP, aren't we? Something we refer to, the earnings, election, and pandemic. Hey, we're, we're on day four of the election, right? We're in day who knows how much of the pandemic. And we're still wrapping up this earnings season in that case. Um, so your sentiment on the market for a neutral bull strategy might change in another week or two after you open your positions next week. That's fine. Wait, manage your existing positions if they need to. Make sure you've got control there. Then come back and open the new positions for the bullish sentiment when your sentiment is back to where you want it to be. That would be my advice to you 
on starting from scratch to open a new portfolio. Don't overdo it. Don't overwhelm yourself by forcing, you know, three or four or five positions of married puts and four or five positions of cash secured naked puts all next week. And then you're staring at this portfolio of 10 positions going, now what? Ease into it. One at a time. Build it. And you're sent and the times when your sentiments changed, back off. Don't worry about it. Manage your existing positions. Watch the market. And then when you feel comfortable again, start with a new position in the married put, start with another new position in the naked put. And if something comes across in the news that you really like and you think is a really good trade, maybe jump on it as a married put. Not a problem. Okay. You like this stock. It came out. You said, I've been tracking this for a while. It's got some good news that came out. I'm going to do it as a married put now. You use, as we saw earlier, that search by symbol. Just put in your stock and then get your expiration. And then you can see which uh, risk best suits your goals for that as well. Sorry about that. Okay. So that's for Alberto. Now, William's first question and Sam's comments. Um, William says, uh, basic question. If I want to put on a bull put credit spread for a specific stock, how would I use power options to compare the different expiration dates and different strike prices to determine the most optimal credit? I would like to compare the initial credit received. I'm sorry, I got to jot this down. A credit received, probability, OTM, number of days to expiration. Okay, now there's two ways to do this, William. This is a, a great question here, but if there's two ways to do it. First thing I might do is go to the spread chain. This is going to be more manual, William, but we'll, we'll walk through it. The spread chain, if I, I'm going to look at put credit and call debit parity. It never hurts to look at the, the call parity if you think you get the midpoint, if it gives you a little bit more boost. We'll look at that in a moment. All right, let me try this here. Skyworks, we just saw that on the uh, naked put screen there. And what I'm going to do is say, okay, I want to go out. So, so what the spread chain does, I'm sorry, it allows you to look at just credit spreads. I can compare bear call and bull put or the debit spreads. We decided we're bullish. So I'm going to look at the put credit and call debit parity. And if you're bearish, you might look at the bear call credit, and bear, excuse me, put debit parity, William. Now, this allows me to put in some basics. Strike difference. Might leave that blank. I don't think it's going to force me to ask it. Minimum net credit, 30 cents. Range out of the money. Now, that's a tricky one. You might not want to use the range out of the money for what you're doing, William. Why do I say that? Because something that's seven days out in time might have an 85% probability to be 2% out of the money. Whereas 30 days out in time, you might get an 85% probability to be 8% out of the money. It's going to vary with your expirations. Minimum return, yeah, we're going to put that at maybe 10 or 11%. I don't know your goals. I'm putting it 11. Minimum probability, let's go 80. Okay? All right. Now, down here, let me see if I get anything. There we go. Now, it's not... It is giving me, it's giving me five point strikes as a default. Okay. So let's just start. You can do it this way when we're going to start with the five point strikes. But now what I can do, what, what am I seeing here? It's allowing me to toggle between all the expiration dates with that category. So now what do I have? This is on the left. I'm sorry, on the right. Wow. On the right are all my bull put credit spreads showing me the minimum net credit range out of the money. Return, probability. Okay. Now, the trick is you might not see all the same strikes, right? Now, this is just my five point strikes, but notice that some of these, they're not the same. And that's because it's possible that the 135, 140 out to November 27th doesn't match one of these criteria due to the bid ask spread. Okay. So here's a 120, 125 that's all the way out to December, 35 days away with a 14% return, of course, because that's the 80% probability or higher. That's the one that has at least a 30 cent midpoint net credit on a five point spread. I'm just using the five points here. Let's change it. Let's go to two points. Okay. Do I get, yeah, there's, there's a good example. 132, 134 for December 4th, 28 days away. Midpoint net credit, 84 cents, eight, 72.4% return. Oh, I'm sorry. 72.4% return. I didn't mean to turn that off. There we go. With an 89% probability. 
And then, oh, here's the December 4th. I'm sorry, here's this one here. And then up here, we've got the 132, 134 at a potential 37% return with a 54 cent midpoint for November 20th, 14 days away with an 89. Same strike, higher probability of expiring worthless, but only 8% out of the money. Oh, they're both 8% of the money. December one only has an 81% probability because it's more time. Okay. Uh, but here we don't see for the seven day out, we don't see the 132, 134. Why? Because it probably doesn't have the minimum net credit. It's too close in that case. All right. So that's the spread chain is one way you can do that. And you can just toggle the strike prices. Now you could set up a search to do a, exactly what you want as well. And here's what I'm going to show you how to do. I like to do this from time to time. I think it's very useful. Okay, and so when I get into the search here, there we go. This is the weekly bull puts. Um, I'm going to clear the filters, William. I'm going to set all expirations. Minimum net credit, 30 cents. Percent return, 10, minimum. Uh, range out of the money, not going to touch because it's going to be different, but I am going to keep the probability. I want 80%, whether I'm seven days out, 14 days out, out. You know me, I'm going 85. I'm just using 80 as an example. And in this case, I'm going to put in some open interest at greater than zero, an option volume today of greater than zero as well. Why? I want to see some activity. I want to avoid anything where there's no option bids. We're even going to put five cents there as a minimum. Strike difference. I can go equal to five. I could create a few searches here with them. I could create equal to five, equal to two, equal to two and a half. Or maybe for now, I'm just going to go greater than or equal to two. Am I going to put in anything else? No, I'm going to save this without running it, okay? And I'm going to call this all expiration single doc template. Okay, save this search. Now, when it runs it, it's going to pull up a mess of things. Hey, I've got too many results. Yeah, because I just looked across the universe of options for any expiration, any bull put spread that's greater than two points or more, and so on and so forth. So let's go to our fundamentals page now. So I've created this. So when I come in here, I'm going to get this error. I'm going to see all these results. Then I'm going to go into fundamentals and type in Skyworks. I've got 21 days, seven days, 42 days, different strikes. Now you can order it too. You can order it by probability. Um, I could order it probably, I don't know if you want to do it this way for what you want to look for. Net credit, delta ratio. I'm looking, oh, there it is, expiration date. And I want lowest to highest, right? So I'm going to change the menu bar here to go lowest to highest, expiration date. There, so now I've got the strikes that match and I've got the 140, 138. That's got my 81% probability and my minimum 30 cent net credit with some volume and open interest. That's key, William. But as you go down the list, you can see as you go further out, we've got different strikes here 21 days out now, 42 days out. That's another way, William, you can do it. Create the blank template with no stock criteria or anything else, just your minimum net credit, return, probability. Uh, I would recommend putting in a minimum option bid. I don't want to see, sometimes when I do this for SPX, I get something that has a zero bid that has no open interest and hasn't been traded and a $4 ask. I'm not getting midpoint on that thing. I'm not getting $2 for that. There's no way. So I put in a, just to make sure the option bid is greater than zero and some volume traded today and some open interest. The vol I do have to point this out, William. The volume today may hinder you. Here's why. If you you said you wanted to compare multiple expirations, different strike prices apart with the minimum requirements for credit, probability, and uh, the other one. This open interest, I'm uh, sorry, the option volume today, William, of greater than zero might be hindering you slightly only because something that's out to April might not have traded yet. Something that's 140 days out in a bull put might not have traded today. So let's see, we were at 14 total results with that basic requirement. Let's take out the volume. Well, I got five more, but hey, I got five more, okay? That's sort of the tricky thing there is that once you start getting into the volume, you know that something that's 90 days, 110 days, you might not see that much activity in that time frame. But those are the two ways to do it. You've got the spread chain where you can put in just those basic four criteria, one stock at a time, or create this blank template in the search tool, leaving 
this doesn't save. This isn't a stock list. This won't save. I saved the blank template. And now when I come in, I can start looking for positions on Amazon, Netflix. But when I first open it, of course, I'm going to get that ridiculous notice. And I know that. But when I first pull the search up, I'm going to get that ridiculous notice that you've got over 600 results. You need to lower your things because I'm going in there to put in my stock price. My stock symbol. I'm sorry as well. All right. So that's how I would do it. And that works for any strategy. If you want to set up a covered call where you want to look and compare covered calls for different expiration dates that have a minimum, uh, you know, 1% out of the money, 2% return on your stock, you'd create a very similar template, all expirations, um, percent return if assigned of 2%, uh, downside protection of 1%. Uh, you don't worry about strike difference there, but minimum option premium, range out of the money, volume open interest. Save that search as a template, then you go in and you put in your stock. Just as a curiosity, let's pull up Netflix. We did Skyworks first. See what Netflix here, probably 35, 121. <laughs> Bull put credit spreads. Yeah, premium's probably higher. Oh, wow. I, I'm sorry. I'm curious as to how far it goes out. 133 days. Look at that. Wow. Okay. So that's probably not what you want to do, William, but there you go. Sam, I'm so sorry we didn't get to, to interrupt there. Interrupt. That's a terrible term. We didn't get to interject with you earlier as we were going through some of this information here for those searchings and uh, other things. But Sam says, hi, everyone. Uh, Apple spreads, bull put spreads, and bear calls. Total 27 trades, three losses. I don't think he means this week. He means uh, when he's been trading the spreads. Uh, five bear calls and rest is bull put. A three loss was a break even. And one was a 60% loss as well. You had a good run with your spy straddle. I knew you would. Um, uh, going into this week, it worked out really well. Still in the 325 straddle, calls have a huge return. Expiration of December 2020. Okay, yes, yeah, so Sam likes to follow the straddles and strangles. Now, if you're still with me from the beginning of the presentation, I talked about uh, for our discussion with David, and he was talking about the horizontal spreads. Why I don't like to use um, the horizontal spreads or the iron butterflies or short straddle. What Sam's talking about when he's a straddle and strangle, he's buying. He's picking, he's going both sides of the market, buying a call and a put, rolling and adjusting the calls and the put because, hey, it's been a great maybe two, two and a half weeks, I'd say, Sam, maybe four weeks, if I'm not mistaken, to catch the ups and downs with these kind of straddles and strangle positions. Let's take a look here. Yeah, perfect. It's two months, as a matter of fact. You see a chart like that, and even though you know SPY is high volatility for what it normally is, it's double its normal volatility, trading the up move here, and then we started to hit into September at that point, going in that three to four week decline, taking profits on the puts, rolling them up, and then taking the profits on the calls, then running it down, and then that great four days there, you've got a new straddle at 350. Um, expiring in January as well, Sam. So the 350 strike, a little bit in the money after today's close. We closed it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Sam is at the money. I can't, I'm looking at the Bollinger Band. Now you can tell it's Friday at six o'clock. I'm looking at the Bollinger Band as the stock price and not the candlestick. <laughs> yeah, we're here at 350. Fantastic. So Sam's got a straddle. Okay, 350 straddle. So he bought a 350 call and 350 put at some point here. That's what I'm talking about. I'm okay with this sometimes or the long strangle to catch these types of market moves when you know events are coming up. Events are kind of winding down here, but we're still seeing some volatility, which is good for this approach. What I don't like is the shorts and the nakeds, as we talked about last week, Sam. You don't want to be caught with a naked call or a naked put or even in a butterfly even right at the money with a short call and a short put, even though they're not naked. because. The whole point of this is that you know you're going to have to manage it one direction or the other. I just made a little Pac-Man looking backwards. Um, but you know you're going to have to manage it because the stock's not going to stay at the same price. Okay, It's not going to stay at the same price. And that's why I don't like selling the straddles and strangles, but buying them around earnings or around major events. Fantastic. Sam, I really like it. All right. Um, so there we go with that. So Sam, it's good to see that you're doing those. I do have something. Um, for me personally, I told you guys it was going to happen. I told you last week it was going to happen. I told you two weeks ago it was going to happen. Um, remember when I said that the cycle, October 26th, a week before the earnings and a week before Halloween, would have been my cycle to open bull put spreads. And I didn't because of the unknown of the big tech 
announcing their earnings on October 30th and the election on November 3rd. But yeah, I missed out on four 100% profitable bull put spreads. Better safe than sorry, but yes, I would have had following the weekly bull put screen and what you've heard me talk about on the bull put credit spread screen there in the search tool. These are the four I would have opened on October 26th. That was my regular two-week cycle, but I didn't do it because the big boy tech earnings on the 30th of October and then the election three days later, too much uncertainty. So I did not enter these trades, but these are the trades that came up at one or two o'clock in the afternoon on our bull put credit spread weekly screen. All would have expired today with 100% profit on the positions, four out of four with the market movements. But I didn't do those. But for testing purposes, and of course to uh, just reemphasize that that is a good uh, approach to use the bull put weekly default screen and bull put credits. Uh, Monday, I probably will. We'll see what happens over the weekend with new lawsuits, new ideas and concepts on the election. More than likely, I'll be opening, uh, again, two to three or four bull puts on Monday afternoon. Um, while I'm here, I'm just going to say a joke. Uh, <clears throat> and of course, the election went so smoothly, Kip. You're absolutely right. You know, we're on day four of the election. By next week, we'll be on day eight of the election. We might go to day 45 of the election. We'll see there. Um, and Sam says, before the sell-off, he had a 350 straddle and spy, closed those puts at 328. Excellent. So, the, so Sam's not just holding them. He's managing them down, taking the profits off one and moving them back up um, in that case. And then when SPY dropped, you had a good run on Twitter puts as well. I remember that when you, you had mentioned those Twitter puts, I think, last week. Uh, I don't know if you continued them this week, Sam. I guess you did as well. Uh, I did this a couple of years ago. Um, it's a fun webinar to watch. This was from last year, as a matter of fact, from January 6, 2020. So, so William had said, Michael, we can make you an honorary Canadian uh, if you're a hockey fan. LOL. Yes, uh, I always followed hockey. So when I did this thing for called the webinar for hat trick for locking and gains, which shows, you know, when you have an unrealized stock, you can buy a put option on it using our insurance tool, then use that income method number six to get income and leave the upside open. So we call it the hat trick. You lock in gains, generate premium to increase those gains, and you leave the upside open. But as I mentioned, of course, I'm a Nashville Predators fan, which uh, some of the hockey purists here in the United States frown upon and have frowned upon since my family and I started following them when they came into the league in 1998. But it's been a lot of fun, a lot of heartbreak, but a lot of enjoyment following the Predators uh, in Nashville in a non-traditional market. And a lot of good players there, especially, of course, Pekka Rene and others. But hey, love my Canadian teams, too. Really like where Vancouver's going, of course, recently. Um, Calgary took a step back this year. I was surprised. See, I thought they were going to be a strong powerhouse there um, out west, very competitive, and they were for a while. And then, you know, pandemic hit midseason, so everything, throw that out the window. Uh, of course, you got to go with the originals. You know, you got to love the Maple Leafs for the originality, the, the original six. You got to love the Canadians. I love Shea Weber because he's, you know, Nashville from Nashville there as well. But thank you, William. Always love hockey. It's my favorite sport. Absolutely as well. OK, well, ladies and gentlemen, I do not see any other questions that have come in. We are at 6.07 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, just want to remind everyone, of course, that uh, today's material are my thoughts on your questions uh, designed, of course, for educational purposes, options, investing, education, increasing investing performance and options, investing knowledge as well. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct recommendations or suggestions. Um, I'm not going to be opening a Skyworks position next week unless maybe it comes up on that bull put weekly screen that we were talking about. And I'm not doing a diagonal spread on Amazon or horizontal spread on Amazon as well. Might open a new married put next week also, but we'll see. Uh, but nothing today was a direct suggestion or recommendation. Options do involve risk, as we've seen and talked about today, so they may not be suitable for all investors. Now, we walked through a lot of tools today. We showed the portfolio tool earlier and how great it is to evaluate the rollout opportunities with our covered call discussion at the beginning. Uh, we showed the structure and what to use for criteria in the diagonal spreads with that debit to strike difference ratio and delta ratio in our patented search tools. We look at some of the options research tools and we created the search for William, of course, in the um, uh, spread screen. So you could do that template so you could do one stock at a time. And we even looked at the spread chain tool as well. If you like any of these tools, you want to take advantage of them. Remember, you can take a 14 day free trial at any time. Just go to powerop.com. Put in your name and email address and you'll have full use of the site for 14 days. 
after that subscription start at only $45 per month. Uh, the most popular service is probably the delayed service at $65 per month. Still very useful for covered calls, naked puts, spread trades, and more. Uh, of course, we do offer a real-time service also. It's a little bit more expensive. Uh, but anytime you run the search, refresh the page, you're getting the numbers and the calculations at that very instant. Or on the portfolio as well. Hey, other free stuff. We went to the webinars today. Remember, if you want to look more information on calendar spreads, the basics, or the criteria, uh, preferred criteria for the diagonal spread or the poor man's covered call, just go to powerop.com slash webinars.asp. And you can go through the different categories there and take a look at those. Also, we went to YouTube there. We showed sort of the uh, the hat trick one. But if you go to the YouTube channel, it's just Power Options on YouTube. You can search for Power Options for YouTube. You can just screen for covered calls, calendar spread, diagonal spread, more. And you'll see all the videos that we have there. Uh, most of the videos that we do are all public on YouTube also. You don't need any kind of subscription or payment or anything as well. All right. Well, uh, William jokes, Michael bring his analysis, uh, his hockey analysis A game. Yeah, that'd be a lot of fun to be a hockey announcer, wouldn't it? Um, Chuck, it was good to see you here today. You didn't have any questions for us today, but it's, I'm glad you were here today. You have a great weekend. We'll try to get these recordings out to you. Kip, thank you for joining us today. Kip says, thanks so much for another wonderful session. Have a great weekend as the election results continue to roll in. William, thank you for your questions. Thank you for engagement today. And Sam, it's great to see you as always. You also enjoy and have a great weekend. Sam, be safe. Still practice social distancing. Wash your hands, everyone. Get some time to relax. Let's all clear our heads from what we saw this week. And we were all probably invested in different things in different ways. And that's okay. Let's take a break. See what the market has in store for us next week. I will let you know as soon as I start getting these archives together and posted for you in the archive session. Good night, everybody. Have a great weekend. We will definitely see you soon. Take care.